Hello Nets, welcome once again to Gina High School, our vision show on Joy Learning TV. I am Isaac Ohine Amankwa, your facilitator for ICT. Well, I hope last week was wonderful because I had a wonderful week and during the examination, that is the BEC, the just BEC, um, ended BEC. I know if you are someone who watched or an ardent worm, viewer of our show you shouldn't have any issue with the questions that came because these are topics that we, we taught recently or we aired recently and going through the questions i i was amazed i was i saw that these questions were very or somewhat say quite cool or easy to answer and i know as nerds you, you did answer them easily well, today we are going to talk about um, storage devices of a personal computer. Um, storage devices of a personal computer. And remember, it's a revision show, so we might not be able to cover everything. We'll just pick bits and pieces of everything that we have under storage devices. Then, during the show, we are supposed to be able to identify the different types of basic storage devices that we have. Then we also look at the uses of storage devices, state the use of storage devices, explain the uses of basic storage devices, by the way, and identify the importance of storage devices. Now, let's hop on the right, as I always say. So when we talk about storage devices, then we are referring to any device or any, any device that is used to store data that is used to what? Store data. Or that or any data can be what? Stored on them. Now, storage devices can hold data and what? Store information both temporarily and permanently. There is a reason why we have temporal storage devices and permanent storage devices. Now, as the lesson unfolds, you understand why we have them. Now, Others two can be what? Internal storage devices or external storage devices. Then we can also group them into three main groups, which is the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary storage devices. Now, let me give you examples of the primary, tertiary, and, and the secondary. Now, when we talk about primary storage devices, then we can make mention of um, storage devices like the RAM, the RAM, random access memory it's an example of what a, um, a primary storage device then when we come to secondary storage device then we can talk about our flash um, flash drives or what we call the pen drives these are also secondary storage device then when we come to the tertiary then we can talk about what most people are now using called the cloud cloud is also another example of what a storage device or tertiary storage device. But please, I am not referring to the clouds out there. I'm referring to what's the internet cloud, a storage system that is on the internet or that is available for um, internet users to store their data. Now, I want us to look at the difference between the primary and tertiary storage devices. Uh, let's look at their difference. From their difference, we can easily identify because I've given you examples. I've given you examples of what they are. Now, it says primary storage devices, its storage is temporal. Its storage is what temporal. That means it stores information temporal. But when it comes to secondary, it stores information permanently. So, as I am giving the difference, you should be what? putting down some examples of primary and secondary different from what I gave out. You should have other examples. So you ask yourself, which device or storage device stores information permanently? Well, let's continue. When we talk about primary storage device, we say it is expensive and smaller. It is expensive and smaller. But when we come towards the secondary, we can say that was it is cheaper and larger. It is cheaper and larger. Secondary st um, primary storage device is faster, but the secondary is slower. Now, it 
this primary storage device is connected through data buses to the CPU. It's connected through what? the data buses. That means the USB ports towards, but not all of them are connected to the USB ports. Some are also connected to the motherboard. Yeah? Now, if we say that the secondary or the secondary story devices, they are connected through cables to the what? CPU, that is the central processing unit. Now, let's go, let me give you an example. When we talk about primary, we made mention of what? The RAM, which is easy to understand. We also have another one called the SSD. Now, the SSD can, can be both, um, or it can stand both for primary and secondary because of its functions. So, per its use or when it's being used or what it's being used for will determine where it will fall. But when we come to secondary, one clear example or one specific example is the CD-ROM. The CD-ROM is an example of secondary storage device where when we save or we store information on the CD-ROM, it is permanent. Unless maybe you destroy the data or you clear it or you clear it and put another data on it. So these are some few examples, but don't worry when you call in, I will ask you to give me one example. Okay, now let's look at the types of storage device. We may mention that we can group them into what? Primary, secondary, and tertiary. That's the three main groups. But when we talk about the types, we can have what? The internal and the external. Now, when we talk about the internal storage devices, then we are referring to storage devices that are within the system unit. And when we talk about the external storage devices, we are talking about storage devices outside the system unit. Now, we made mention that one of the primary storage devices is what? The RAM. Do you know that RAM can also fall under internal storage device? Yes, RAM also falls under what? Internal storage device. Then we talk about what? The CD-ROM, which can also fall under what? External storage device. Now, what is a storage media? Before we go to the internal and the external, what is a storage media? Now, when we talk about storage media, there's a difference between a storage media, a storage medium, and a storage device. Now, some storage devices can perform the function of storage media. Now, we say that the storage media, these are materials. Now, listen, these are what materials on which data are written and stored. These are what materials on which data are written and stored. But what is storage medium? Medium, the storage medium is any technology used to place, keep, and retrieve data. So can you give me an example of a storage medium? Well, I know you make mention of um, the CD-ROM drive. Yes, the CD-ROM drive is an example of a storage medium. It is, it is a device or a technology that is used to what, put data on a CD-ROM and also can help you read the information on the CD-ROM. So you can mention um, the uh, CD-ROM drive or you can mention the DVD drive. They are, you, any of them that you mentioned is accepted. Okay, now let's go to the external storage device. Now, as I said, when you're talking about external storage devices, we are talking about what devices that are outside, or sometimes they are called auxiliary storage devices. They are called auxiliary storage devices or secondary storage devices. It's a device that contains all the addressable data, storage or stored that is not inside the computer's main stored storage. Then they contain what? Data that is not in the computer's main storage or memory. Now, this is what happens. When you are typing or anytime you are processing an information, it goes first into the RAM, that's the random access memory, where it is stored for a short time. Now, 
This RAM is a very volatile device or a storage device in that when the lights or when you or date, um, your computer is turned off, you lose your data. It cannot store data for a long time. It's for a short time so that you can have easy access to it. That is why we said the primary storage devices are faster because if I want to access anything like as we are operating our computers right now, every data that I send is automatically stored in the RAM until I am um, I store it on the hard drive myself or a pen drive or any other storage device but if I have not stored it on it or maybe you are typing what Microsoft Word and you are typing and you forgot to save your file or you forgot to save your document it stores whatever information you are inputting on the RAM then later when you need it it gives it back to you but for you to be safe or to be on the safer side, you have to what, save it on the, what, the hard disk drive or the removable device. So we say that an external storage device can be removed or sorry, can be a removable or non-removable. That means it can be removed or it can be the one which are fixed, the types which are what, fixed within. Okay, now let's go to so we have examples here as i mentioned we have the hard disk drive that is hdd which stands for what hard disk drive then we have the ssd which stands for what solid state drive solid state drive then we have the usb which is what universal serial bus now let's go to the internal the internal storage device these are known as primary storage devices so you see that when you anytime you come across primary storage device then you know we are referring to what internal storage devices when you come across secondary storage devices then we know we are referring to what um, external storage devices a primary storage device is a medium that holds memory for short period of time while the computer is running although it has much lower access time and fast performance or faster performance the ram which is random access memory is an example and we also have what we call the cache some will pronounce that cache however you pronounce it we will take it like that like some will say data some will say data so however you pronounce it we accept it but the spelling is the most important thing as i said last week Make sure you write the correct spelling. So we have the cache are both examples of primary storage device. A primary storage device may also be referred to as internal memory, main memory, main storage, or primary memory. So anytime you come across internal memory, main memory, primary memory or main storage we are referring to one and the same thing which is what internal storage device or the primary storage device okay now there are many storage devices but the most widely used ones are the hard disk drive the cd-rom stroke dvd-rom drive where we know that cd-rom means what compact disk rom then we have the DVD, which is digital versatile disc. Some will say digital video disc. However, you put it, the DVD ROM. Then we have also the floppy disc. The floppy disc is rather unfortunate. We don't have them in the system anymore. Um, gone were the days when we were using them. We used to store games on them and play games with them. And I, even, I was even surprised when I reflect. I reflected and realized that the storage was very small now we also have the pen drives or what we call the flash drives then we have the memory card what some of you call memory chip they are all storage device by the way do you know that your mobile phone sim card or your mobile phone SIM, the mobile phone sim card is an example of a storage device well, have you realized that you can store phone numbers on them? 
Well, then that means it's a storage device because we can store what data on it. We, when we receive text message, it's stored on it. So we can say that what our SIM cards are also what example of what storage devices. Now let's take them one after the other. We will just go through a few of them. The hard disk, we have the hard disk is the main and usually the largest storage device inside the system unit. Now, in some computers or in some laptops or recent laptops or tablets, they use or we use what we call the SSD instead of the hard disk drive. Most computers are now using the SSD instead of the hard disk drive. Now, this is the reason why. The SSD operates with electricity or electronics. So it boots faster. It is way faster than the hard disk drive. So when you switch on a computer or a laptop, sorry, or maybe some computers, some tablets, and within five, eight seconds, it's able to boot to your main screen or your desktop, then you should know that it's probably working with what? Uh, an SSD. But with the hard disk drive, it uses what we call platers. That is, on the platers, it's a metallic circular object. I have an image here which I will show you. A metallic circular object called a plater. On that plater is where the data is written. And we have the data written there. So imagine if it wants to read the OS, it will have to go around, scan where the OS is saved before it starts to boot. So it takes a lot of time. And imagine when you have a problem with your platter where it is scratched, then that means it will be difficult for you to read your data. Now, this is an example of a hard disk which has been opened. This blue or if you can see it as silver, but it's blue, it's silver, um, sea blue. It's this sea blue object here is what we call the platter. That is all the platter. Then we have the moto in the middle. We have the read write. This object over here is what we call the read write. It is the device that reads the data on the platter. But the whole object from the tip, which is the read write, down the M2, um, let's call it the stem, is what we call the actuator. The actuator. We have the interface, the jumper, the power supply, just something little. I know you have already done that in school, so just a refresher. Now let's go to the CD ROM. The CD-ROM, also known as the compact disk read-only memory. The compact disk read-only memory. That means it is the type of device that you can only read on after you have what put data on. You can only read on it. You cannot um, rewrite on it. There are some devices that are called rewritables. So if you have such devices, then you can talk about what rewriting on them. So we say read only simply means that once information is put on the storage device, nothing can be added or removed from the CD-ROM. But um, there are technologies or there are ways you can um, save data on a CD-ROM and still delete data on a CD-ROM. That is when you have the option of choosing between a um, putting data or using it as a USB, a USB type of device. You can do that. Now, the CD-ROM comes with a maximum storage of 700 megabytes. 700 megabytes <coughs> of information. Then we have the DVD-ROM, which is similar to the CD-ROM, but this time, uh, this is the digital video decks or digital versatile decks, however you put it, because the information on the internet is vast and everybody is calling it a different name, but I prefer we call it a digital video decks. Now, it can take up to or it can store the maximum of 4.7 gigabytes. 4.7 gigabytes. Now, I remember I didn't tell you the amount of data that the hard disk can carry. Now, for the hard disk drive, 
we can have as large as one terabyte we can have even beyond one terabyte depending on what you are using it for but it ranges from 24 gig upwards to one terabyte if you see a 24 gig hard disk drive then you are looking at a hard disk drive which it was maybe manufactured somewhere 20 years back or 15 20 years back let me put it that way yeah so nowadays we have higher ones so we say the dvd rom can take up to what 4.7 gigabytes now let's look at the floppy disk drive the floppy disk drive is also known as a diskette it is also known as a diskette let me show you a picture of it this is a picture of the floppy disk drive this over here is what you call the three and a half inch floppy disk drive and the big one over here is what we call the five one quarter inch floppy disk drive now the floppy disk drive saves or stores information on a flexible pl plastic that stores data in a magnetic form now listen floppy disk drive stores information in the what the magnetic form the cd-rom stores information in the optical form or using laser to store information so we have examples of the floppy disk drive here as i've mentioned we have when you look at the diagram on our left we have a, di a well labeled diagram where we have this part called the read write the topmost part where i'm circling is called the read write then we have our label here this is where we used to write the title or the name of the document or the, the title of the document on the floppy disk then we have a circular object in the middle which is called a spindle the spindle hole then we have a particular knob to our left where we lock or unlock our floppy disk when it is locked you cannot put data on it or take data out but when it's open you can then what put data on it i remember some time ago we were trying to put data on a distance a floppy disk drive we tried and not knowing it was locked immediately we were done we just yanked it out and left we later inserted it into our computer and realized that there was nothing on it. It was empty. Yes, we lost everything. Okay, now we also have the pen drive, or what, I, what we call the flash drive. When you come across pen drive or flash drive, they are one and the same thing. Now, the pen drive, also known as flash drive or USB stick, is a small key-sized device that stores data and transfers files from one computer to another. Now let's look at the capacity. The capacity ranges from what 32 megabytes to 128 gigabytes. That is big enough. It can contain a lot. But I know most of your mobile phones don't are not even up to what 128 gigabytes. So it contains it can contain what data of about what 32 to what 128 gigabytes and above. That means there are other USB sticks which can take a lot of data. Pen drives are more durable. They are uh, you can easily carry them along. I even have mine in my pocket. I can carry them anywhere I go, which is more durable and also very, very durable.